That's the ball laws. Oh, no it? way! <laughs> no way! And there's only one material difference between this targe yeah. and the last targe. Hi folks, Tom from Fan Dabby Dozy, thanks for tuning in. Here with another video for the Highlander series where I'm looking at the Scottish Highlands during the 17th and 18th century, mainly from the context of wilderness survival skills and martial arts. And in this video, I'm revisiting the iconic Scottish shield known as the Targe or Taragage in Gaelic. Now I've already done a detailed past video about the Targe where I talked about its history, how it was typically constructed and how it was used in both single and battlefield combat during the 17th and 18th century. So go check out that video if you haven't seen it already. And in that video I discuss how during this time period the targe's design and tactics was evolving due to the increased use of black powder firearms. And I came across some different ways of making the targe that people theorised was an effort to try find that balance where you know it's still lightweight enough that you can still use it as a hand weapon but also an attempt to try and make it bulletproof at least bulletproof for the guns typically used during that time period but as far as I'm aware no one has yet tested some of these TARS designs against the typical firearms of the time period until now that is So this video took about six months to organize and I'm super grateful to everyone who helped make it happen. Now stay tuned to the end of the video to find out how you can enter for a chance to win one of the targes that we tested. But before we get into it, this video wouldn't have been possible to organize or fund without the special help of our wonderful sponsors, Wandrium. In this video, we'll mention some iconic battles that shape Scotland. And really, the whole world that we live in today has been shaped by some decisive battles throughout the world and ages. And recently, I've been really enjoying an online course titled The Decisive Battles of World History, as well as History's Great Military Blunders. And it's mind-blowing how all our world cultures, languages and geopolitics can be dramatically shaped by just a few key decisions or mistakes taken by one person at key moments in human history. I've been doing these courses through the platform Wandrium, which is the rebrand of The Great Courses Plus, and they have been a faithful sponsor for the channel for several years now. Wandrium Courses offers a huge variety of short and long form videos, lectures, tutorials, how-tos and documentaries, all given by enthusiastic experts in their field, and new content is released monthly. They have topics on pretty much anything you can think of, from history, science, music, martial arts, economics, mythology, you name it, they probably have it. My favourite thing about it is you can download the audio of the courses on your phone and just listen to it like you would a podcast while you're doing other things. For example, I love to learn and listen to different courses as I'm building things or while on long car journeys. Some past courses I've enjoyed include Celtic World and Cooking Across the Ages, just to name a few. So you can try it out for free by going to www.wandrium.com forward slash fandabidozy or click the link in the description below to start learning today. It also helps support the channel. Alright, so for today's Highland Mythbusting video, I'm joined by two special guests. We have Paul McDonald from McDonald Armories. I'd say Paul is the go-to guy for all things Scottish military history. So he's here to keep us right from the historical side of things. We also have Raymond Finlayson, and he is part of a Jacobite reenactment group. Uh, and he's a owner of some beautiful 18th century firearms that are going to be giving our targes a hard time today. So we've got three different types of targes, all made with slightly different variations of material, which I'll we'll get to later. But first, a big thanks to the craftsmen who made these. So these two were made by Vaughan Moffat from Hammer and Hand, based in Tasmania, Australia. So these are already quite well travelled. Um, beautiful targes. And this one in the middle is made by Graham Biggerstaff of Alba Targes. So thank you both so much for making these. Yeah, hopefully they'll survive somewhat till the end of the video. So am I right in saying that the standard construction of a targe in the 18th century, it was generally two layers of softwood? Um, yeah, can you explain that, it? That's right. We're finding not just, you know, one layer of plank wood here. Mm. We're finding two layers of planking being, being put together and held together with wooden pegs. Okay. And what we find is that the grain of the wood 
is crossed at 90 degrees. Okay. That does a couple of things. It strengthens that overall construction against impact against edge weapons, certainly, but it also, well, we're in the Highlands, no. and you know you're going to get a nice view, but you know you're probably going to get soaked through to the skin at some yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. So everything had to be weatherproof, okay. and this is a weatherproofing consideration as well. Okay. It stops it warping in one direction, it gets fully soaked through. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. And people have tested shooting these with musket, uh, muskets in the mm. modern era, right? Uh, but what is kind of make this video a bit more unique is that you've come across some examples that seem to have a, a layer of felted wool in between the planks. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. It was a really interesting little detail that popped out when examining some targes where either the edge leather was, you know, uh, removed enough or worn enough that you could see between the layers of planking. And there was another uh, couple of examples where the, the rear um, of the targe you could see visibly between a couple of the layers, mm. uh, you know, between the planks themselves. Okay. And what we're seeing was a fine layer of compressed wool. Interesting. So everything about the construction of any weapon has to be practical first. Yeah. So you know our minds start to go to what's what's the reason for this? Mm. And there's something that seems to make sense, but there's only one way to know. Yeah. And that's why we're here. <laughs> So yeah, we're making history in this video. Um, so yeah, so basically um, we've got a few different uh, variations of material to basically to test these um, these theories of uh, why these targes were constructed in this way. And this first one um, is yeah made by Vaughan Moffat, and this is just the two layers of soft wood, no wool core, um, a layer of leather facing with the brass studs. Um, the second one made by Graham is two layers of plank soft wood but in between the layers of planking is that that felted wool that the, the historical examples seem to show and the final one again is made by Vaughan and this is two layers of hardwood two layers of oak and in between that is yeah that felted wool once again so hopefully we've got a bit of variation that we can test our different <coughs> our different firearms on from I guess uh, prediction wise from softest to hardest but I guess we we won't find out <laughs> until later on which brings us on to Raymond uh, with your boom boom sticks that you're gonna be uh, testing these these targets on <clears throat> can you um, yeah explain briefly about what the two different weapons you're gonna be shooting today absolutely so first one I'll reach over and pick up the, the flintlock pistol it's a 0.51 caliber and it is a typical Scottish design. It's a Dune pistol. Now Dune is a village in Perthshire where these Scottish all metal pistols were made. Uh, first of all in the mid 1600s by a pistol smith called Thomas Cadell. He starts the production first. Others will also produce Campbell, Murdoch and those who know about these pistols will recognize these names Campbell, Murdoch in regard to these pistols. No trigger guard, uh, all metal, there's a clip on the back where it will slot into a belt and quite a common way of wearing them could be on a shoulder strap like this just tucked against the chest and that's quite secure. Also keeps the firing mechanism dry because that's against the wool jacket on my chest. So that is the flintlock pistol, a close range weapon and used in battle at close ranges, possibly 10-15 yards. The flintlock musket is a French 1720 at Charlesville. It is a .69 calibre and is supplied by the French for the Jacobites during the 1745 uprising. Now the, the size of the musket ball for this Charlesville musket is the size of a Malteser with the chocolate licked off and, <laughs> and there we have it between my forefinger and thumb. Solid lead ball and that will do an awful lot of damage to whatever it's going to hit. Now the gunpowder charge for the musket has to be appropriate to the, 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 the diameter of the barrel and with the appropriate charge the musket ball will have a maximum range of 150 yards but at 150 yards it's merely dropping into the heather there's not much force behind it anymore this is really a close range weapon and battlefield ranges are really
from 70 yards downwards and the closer you can get to your enemy ideally about 25 or 30 yards is where you want to volley your muskets and it takes a lot of discipline to march that close under fire to achieve that. There's steel flintlock pistol here obviously a much smaller musket ball range much shorter again as I said before about 15 yards even closer in battle. It takes 20 seconds to reload I don't have time in the heat of battle, battle to reload my, my flintlock pistol so I can flip it around it's now a club it's heavy and that will do some serious damage or I can throw it at my enemy which again is a pretty lethal projectile so the flintlock pistol number of uses and if I do throw it at someone I pick it up at the end of the battle or hopefully a better one <laughs> great well thank you so guys do you have any predictions what you think is going to happen do you think all of them are just going to get minced and they're not going to stop anything or do you think some might stop the pistols what do you, what do you guys think well the hope is i think that we see a difference uh, between uh, the targe without the webbing yeah. and the targes with the webbing. Yeah. It'll be just different, interesting to see the differences between the hard and the soft wood versions, yeah. um, but the the idea of why that was there in the first place is that it seems to be uh, providing a, a compression layer which also separates the planking slightly enough that that should stop the splintering of the back of the first plank immediately pressing and pushing and splintering mm. the second and it's dampening yeah. that shock wave that would be yeah. if you had two hard surfaces and that shock wave would yeah. just go straight through mm. so in, in, dampen it a wee in bit. theory that seems to make sense okay. yeah and okay this is, this is and is it out. kind of similar you could say to the idea of modern kevlar you know the, the softer thing where it's, you've got a strong fiber similar idea and, kind and, of and capture as that a, projectile a web as such a web, to, yeah. yeah 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 to, to absorb the energy okay yeah. Yeah. interesting well let's go check out our range setup uh because we're gonna test out slightly different angles slightly different variations basically to um yeah and we're going to try and make it as realistic as possible in terms of um yeah how someone would hold this targe um so yeah let's go to the range and explain our experiment so uh, you'll be holding the targe right i will be yeah <laughs> <laughs> So this is to kind of simulate someone holding our shield. We then have a, a cardboard silhouette target that we're just gonna place right behind. So if any bullets or parts of bullets or parts of splinters go through, hopefully uh, that will show up in our bit of cardboard. And also, is it right, Paul, that there's accounts of Highlanders deliberately tilting their targe when they're expecting a volley? C certainly of them getting down behind the targes. This is something that Donald McBain talks about okay. as a Highlander, but as a soldier Aye. against Jacobites at Battle of Mulroy and Killycrankie. Okay. He talks about the Highlanders being behind, receiving the volleys of shot behind their targes. It doesn't talk about specific angles, okay. but it would make sense if to you present angle it slightly. more of a, a metal face with your studs when it's at an angle. Yeah. Okay, so we're kind of just, we're going to stay at a fixed range for both uh, the pistol and the musket but we're going to play around with this angling to see if it makes a difference That's a hit. Yep. So, this is our first hit on the soft wood no wool core. And um, we slanted the targe to kind of recreate that kind of uh, preparation for battle that, um, yeah, there's some recording evidence of. And quite an interesting, looks like it stopped it. Right. 
What's your diagnosis, Paul? <laughs> It's an interesting result and something that I don't think we quite expected. We've got both entry and exit here on the targe. So it's, it's bounced through, or looks as though it's bounced through. But when it's impacted, it's impacted in the upper part of the targe here. And of course, it's got a bit of freedom of movement mm. as a targe would have on mm -hmm. impact, naturally. And so when it's been hit, the targe has levelled more as this has been travelling and it's exited out nice. fully. Cool. So, are we, uh, Manny is still safe? <laughs> it saved his head. Oh. Oh. Alrighty. It went through. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh aye. There? And a big splinter out the Punch back. Punch through, aye. Right, right. Big splinters taking the leather mm -hmm. off the back mm -hmm. there as well. Mm -hmm. Interesting. That's your, Nasty splinters. That's your bits. Yes. Jason, see that straightish twig? Aye. Could that, could that go through as a... A nice indicator. Aye, so there there we go, there we go. Yeah, that good's there. CSI 1745. <laughs> <laughs> mm. So it's punched through, so it's, aye, so it's punched through pretty, pretty. So he got lucky first time when he was tilting it. Mm -hmm. But we just dropped the angle just a little bit. Yeah. What was that rough, rough angle, do you think, that first shot was? It was a very shallow angle. Very shallow, shallow angle. About 20 degrees, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. About 20 degrees, but then that degree, that, that gets shallower with the impact. Yeah, yeah it's going to the exit about here. Whereas this has dropped and hit hit lower down. It's pushing down the so way. it's pushed yeah. in this way here. Should we just try with a pistol next? Now we know sure. mm -hmm. it's not going to stop a musket yeah. flat. Oh. I put so much paper in. Right here, on the edge. Has it been deflected? And it caught away, it. Paul? No, caught there it, it is. It's caught it. It's caught. It's caught it. It's well, well. in there. But it hit a uh, stud. Yes. So you see the studs yes, working yes. there. It's actually hit right on the stud, mm. hasn't it? Mm -hmm. And the studs deflected it enough. It's deformed there yeah. with, a, with the perfect the shape of the stud mm -hmm. head. And did it go through? Oh, I can't see. Right, there she is. No, nope. no. Nope. your ball. No. Nope. Again, it's hit a stud. Look at that. Yep. It's hit the stud. It's you can see it's where it's yeah. flattened yeah, and deformed. But it's enough to absorb <laughs> the force over over where the the stud contacts against the face. It spreads the force and it deflects the ball off, just as this one's done. Mm. Exactly the same. And it's gone into the soft wood, and that soft wood's absorbed it. it. There we go. Result. So it's pistol proof. That's a good sign. That would still be one reason that, yeah, to enforce your targe like this, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. These studs are not just decoration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, yeah, we can see that they're doing doing a lot to stop the bullets. Right there. This one. Yeah. Stopped it. It stopped it. On a stud. It's on a stud. Oh, we said you couldn't hit a stud. <laughs> we said you couldn't hit a stud. <laughs> He's been too accurate for his own good again. Show off, eh? <laughs> Force field. Yeah. We've got no. We got the no, okay. Another shot. Another shot. We're gonna shoot until we don't hit a stud. <laughs> It's not hit a stud, no, but it's okay. gone further than the one that did. There we now go. that's oh, a good yeah. test in itself, mm -hmm. right there. This mm -hmm. has hit a, hit a stud, and it's only, you could say, gone as far as the first plank, whereas this is 
Whoa, in danger of poking through. Mm -hmm. So we're yeah. pretty confident even your standard construction is at least pistol proof of this, this mm -hmm. caliber of pistol. Mm -hmm. You can see it. I think I can see the ball. That's the ball lodge. Oh, no way! No way! Woohoo! Look at that! A musket shot has properly been stopped. And that's the 30 yards. And there's only one material difference between this targe yeah. and the last targe, and that is a thin layer of compressed wool webbing. Mm. And it stopped one depth of planking in. It hasn't hit the, any of the brass studs yeah. either. It's not. No metal to form it. So, uh, oh, now. That is cool. Well, that's very interesting. I am eh? surprised. That's I'm very, surprised. I'm, 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 I'm a little surprised too. <laughs> There's a slight bulging in the back. Uh -huh. You can see the, the pins have come out. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that would have definitely hurt a lot. <laughs> you would have felt it. And yeah. that's right where your knuckle would be. But yeah. you know what? You would have carried this tars down to the pub that day yeah. and told that story. <laughs> So what now? Do you want to yeah drop it a little bit? Aye, shallower angle. About that, 45. Aye. That looks mm -hmm. about right. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Look at that. that went through. Through the bit of wood. And right into the face. Ah ha ha ha, that's where the splinters have come yes. from. Yeah, they've come from there. It's gone mm -hmm. through, it's hit here, pretty se pretty centrally. Yeah. But high up, but it's gone through to splinter fully out yeah. the support. Mm -hmm. So, it's not supported this boy in the process, oh. but... But Mr. Musketball is right there. He's uh, been stopped by the bit of wood. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's how it? much energy yeah. do you right. think? So he went right. through the cardboard, but he's been stopped by the stake. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's close to a bottle of whiskey, but it's not quite. Dance. Right in the middle. <laughs> but it went through. Belter. Yes, right through. Punched fully through the back. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You can see all the bits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There we go. Yeah. It's like straw. He yeah, put straw, straw in there. Oh, he did. The straw, padding. The straw will be the padding for the arm. The padding mm. for the arm. At the yeah. back. Mm -hmm. And you see, our horse hair was uh, your was usual standard. material. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. And it still had plenty of energy because it's straight through, blowing out the back of the stake. Okay. More sloping. The shield is like modern tank armor, which slopes. Yes. If yes. it's vertical, it provides. If it was an inch thick, it provides mm -hmm. an inch protection. But if you slope mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. it provides. Much more than that, mm. yes, vertical yes. protection. Mm. It's, it's yes. the same principle sloping the shield, uh -huh. aye, sloping the tire. Let's get the pistol down here. He hit it! <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> Oh. Well, there's the targe, and there's the boss. There's the boss, behind and there's the bit of wood that the boss. Graham said he put That's it in. dunted in there. Oh, wow, right on and it. Match and match. Fit right the there, there we go. Dunt. Belt. So it go. saved them. So, yes, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Stopped it. Completely. Clearly. And that musket ball will be away back in the, the woods there somewhere. I hope it's a malt whiskey. Because that's, uh, <laughs> well, we didn't qualify what type of whiskey now, did we? Dash it, we Or didn't. the size of bottle. <laughs> <laughs> I've been tricked with that before. <laughs> I don't know why I got with this one. And the fact that the metal is curved, yeah. it's, not, it's not a flat surface that the ball's hitting. Yes, yes. You know, and I think the wood being behind it as well mm -hmm. would have helped. Has, has really saved it. Definitely. Possibly any danger of it punching through. Mm -hmm. You've got a lot of material support, and that's clearly, boom, spreading the, the force 
with full contact on the targe. Yeah. So, you know, it's a perfect vehicle for deflection, in fact. Well, we see oh, how the targe does minus that. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yes. Let's do it until we keep it flat. I think we like want to know the Let's keep it, it flat. Yeah. Um, Caught it. You caught it? Yes. Oh, it's right it. there. Uh -huh. well, that was squared on. Yes. And it's not hit a, a stud. Yeah. It's gone straight into the wood and it's stopped between the first and second planking. It, has it come through? The wooden spot is right in front of it. That's through. We have to. We have to. It's right on the uh, the grip, and I can feel. I can feel something there. It's mm -hmm. it's it's pushed, but it's not it's it's not punched through. It's not going through. It's not split no. actually. It's not splintered at all. Okay. So, so we move on to the final charge. It's an interesting it did, yeah. place yes. to hit it. I'm seeing daylight through it. it. Oh. Yeah. Let's see it went Clear through. daylight, it's punched. Ooh. Mm. Right through, yeah. Goodness me, that's a lot of damage through. on the other side there. Aye, 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 aye. More so than the soft wood. Well, yeah, you've I effectively so. impacted right against the ends of the grain. That's correct. Yeah. Oh, that, that's true. That boom. would split it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would split it wide open, which yeah. is it's done. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you split wood? Yeah. By the grain. Yeah. That's what you do when you make, make kindlers with axe into the grain. Yeah, exactly. Aye, yeah. Aye, aye. It's split, so yeah. well, that's probably why it got through. We've just found a, a, a much more entertaining way to make your kindling. <laughs> 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 Is it worth another shot at that I, angle? Probably, I would, yeah. I would say yeah, so. Yeah, I would say so. I would say so. Oh, Good hit. Oh, yeah. That was a solid hit. See it on the side. No, it went through though. Right here, and it's been between the studs. It's punched through. Mm -hmm. Yes, fully through. Oh, hey, that just landed at your knee. Oh, look at that. Gee whiz. Where did oh, that come still from? It's still warm. <laughs> Feel the heat. Still warm. There's where it's oh, stopped. There you go. It's been stopped by that bit of wood. Mm. Which, I. Could as well be a forearm. Aye. That would I be reckon, in your, I reckon yeah, your, ha your hand. You could at least have at least have a fracture or break or punch through muscle yeah. with it. Because you can see it split the, 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 wood, the wood here well yeah. with the force. There's a bit of force going into that. A lot of soldiers, you know, in the 18th Aye. 19th century as well, uh, would have a few musket balls in them. Yeah. And keep a few with them, you know, <laughs> through the rest of their career. <laughs> if the surgeons couldn't get know, them out. too deep. Mm -hmm. And because uh, a musket ball can deflect off a bone mm. and travel another path. Yes, it can, indeed. Donald yeah. McBain carried three. Three musket balls three in musket him. Three musket balls and a silver plate in his head, mm -hmm. covered in scars and full of stories. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's well, interesting that I was thinking the oak really was going to be better. But it seems like it's just Aye, it's really, brittle. You really can see the, splintered. So potentially the softwood combination is actually superior. So we do it again a slightly lower angle. Yeah. I mean it looks like it's probably gonna go through again, but maybe uh -huh. if we try get try something out more in the middle. Yeah. Let's see if we hit the boss. He's <laughs> <laughs> going for that second bottle. <laughs> <laughs> that definitely went through. <laughs> See the difference as well there as to where it got mm. hit. When it hit here, mm -hmm. boom, it spun you know almost the whole thing. Here you barely saw it move. Yeah. The targe barely moved. Mm -hmm. And that was sitting much, yes, right right where the arm is. Whoa. Oof. Ouch. Tight has shattered the oak into tiny pieces here. Is that from a previous shot? Shattered into tiny pieces here. Wow, so that would have gone in your arm. 
Oh, I. But it went through, didn't it? It didn't break that wood. And it came out through the. Oh, did it go right through the support? Yeah. Oh, I don't think it went through the wood. I think it was just below the support. Oh, just below ah, the, the leather was the, below, it's yes. Here, so it's punched through. Uh -huh. It has punched That's through. That's a bit That's of. Uh, is that a bit of the leather? Mm. It looks like it. And then one of these. That was just. Oh, you can see that's all new. Yes, it is. That's it's all, all tiny, uh, it's the tiny shards which match the, the back of the targe. Ah, uh, uh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Splintered. Shattered. It shatters the oak. What do you reckon? A pistol? A pair of the pistols? Uh, I'd be, I'm really interested to see how the pistol compares mm. now, knowing how easily this smashes and you know, splinters. Mm -hmm. Mm. Fluid. I think it's I think it's just gone past it. I think it has and it's buried in there. Out. Yes, it popped the mm. stud out. Aye. Yeah. Still warm. Aye, aye. I think if it would have hit the stud first you would have seen much more clear of a dent yes. on that rim. Aye. Mm. What we've got behind it though is the splinting from before. This is yeah. this is the shot yes. here. Which has burst out mm -hmm. quite a quite a degree. But I don't think this is has pushed out anymore. It seems to have held. Mm-hmm. At a shallow angle, yes, at least. Yeah. Right next to another shot. Yeah. <laughs> Shall we see if 45 degrees on it makes a difference? Yeah. Let's do it. Right on a stud. <laughs> right it is. Right yeah. on a stud. Right yeah. on a stud. Cracking yeah. shot. He's oh, going for is. that second bottle of whiskey. <laughs> it is right on mm -hmm. a stud. It's and it stopped it out. practically on the surface. Yeah. Practically on the surface. Nothing coming. No. Nothing. Nothing in the back. No. Nothing at the back. No. <laughs> so that's totally absorbed. Yeah, I, it. Lead, but I'm I think yeah. we need to do it's another lead. 45. Mm -hmm. You reckon? <laughs> on the leather. Does it miss again? I think. Is that fire? Uh, I didn't put the ball in. <laughs> so he's hit stud. Hit stud again. And it's basically bounced off. Oh. It's not there. It's just flattened that out, isn't it? That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. It stopped it. So. I just not, need to know how to stud this thing. <laughs> it's amazing enough, the huh? studs seem yeah, to be. Yeah, see, he's hit another stud. It's too good. See? Hmm? Too good. Yeah, Sean, maybe you're right. Maybe there's some weird <laughs> magneticness about this that yeah, we don't want to say. Some force. I feel yeah. warm. That's the one. That's the one you just fired. Yeah. It yeah. Imprint of the stud. And, and you found that just right here. Yeah, right at my feet. So it literally bounced off. Mm -hmm. It's just gone so boom. That was a 45, wasn't it? Yeah. Pam! Tonk. Like that. Mm hmm. Like yeah. that, probably. Yep. Mm -hmm. Spot on. Yep. Perfect fit. Yep, yep. Looks yeah. like a stud again. <laughs> Uh, it is mostly not stud actually, <laughs> and it is, it's, it's deep in there. Mm -hmm. Is it, is it still through. in there, the ball? Yeah, you can see it, you can uh -huh. see it. You mm -hmm. can see it, it's still in there, but it's not punched through, and it's not splintered through. Well, I think the test now, a real teller would be hitting the leather at 90 degrees with a pistol. It's beside the other one. It's right it's beside right. the other one. You hit another stud. <laughs> but again, look at that. Look at that. It's There's a negative. difference between that's been hit at 45 degrees on, yeah. the, on the leather, but mm -hmm. at 45 degrees it's gone deep, it hasn't gone full mm -hmm. through. 
That's at 90 degrees, face on, but it's hit a stud. Mm -hmm. And it's barely that gone. That stud has saved it Yeah. from going any further completely. Mm -hmm. And we know that because it's, 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 it's more brittle yeah, yeah, wood. Yeah. So there's no question that the stud's been the main thing that's played in there. So we Ooh. need to know. <laughs> we <laughs> need to know. So what yep. happened there? Missed the studs? On the leather. On yep. the leather. Absolutely mm -hmm. on the leather. And there she is. Yep. There she is sitting right there. Right there. She's not gone any further. So it's very pistol proof. The main difference with this one though, the hardwood, is it didn't stop the musket. Mm. Even, yeah. at, even at shallow angle. No. So is there any other shots we want to try? Or do you think that we've, we've kind of got everything that we... Yeah. I think it's, it's, it's covered all angles. It's covered all I angles, so, yeah, literally. <laughs> Alrighty, we had some unexpected results there. We did. My predictions were wrong. I thought that was going to do better. Our first hits for all of them were shallow angles with that musket. And maybe that's a good thing to focus on because everyone was slightly different. Mm. Uh, yeah, do you want to talk us yeah. through it, Paul? What do you think is going on? Yeah, so Targi's held at an angle of about 20 degrees. Um, yeah, this was surprising because I think in our minds to start with, we're thinking it's, it's either wood. going to go through Aye. or it's going to stop it. But we didn't expect it to bounce in a way through where the, the deflection of the targe surface actually saved, I think, the targe. Yeah. You know, from a lot of damage because the shot continued in a straight line, but because of the deflection of the targe, it looked like it had bounced in and out of the uh, targe. Yeah, yeah. You've got entry and exit wound essentially. So this was <clears> surprising. <throat> and I think the soft wood also here has helped absorb that energy as the targe has moved. Yes, which is something I didn't think. I was thinking oak all the way, hardwood, <laughs> surely hardwood equals better shield. But this was showing something different. Yeah, so our first so, shot on the soft wood with the wool core. Yep. Also the, very the Alba Targis here. This yep. was our shallow this was our shallow angle shot right here with the musket. And it stopped it. It's fully stopped it. The poem has gone as far, certainly, as the first planking. Um and it's likely met the wool in there, go into that second planking, but it's not gone any further. So even at the shallow angle here with the soft wood, with the wool, it's bulletproof, it's stopped it. So I thought, in my predictions, yeah, I just thought, right, hardwood with the wool core, this is gonna be the best, but actually, it's probably the most, you know, the biggest exit wound <laughs> with all of them. And that was even, yeah, so even at that steepest angle, that 20 degrees, mm -hmm. can, what one was the 20 degrees? Near the edge. Was that edge? Through, yeah, yeah, this one. Mm. So even with that 20 degrees, it was going through where the soft wood targes stopped the first shots. Um, but then we w moved on to the pistols, and you were quite surprised by the effectiveness of the, the tacks, didn't you? Yeah, exactly, the, yeah. The studs. What we're seeing with the, with the pistol was that all the targes took the pistol shots, yeah? Mm. They were stopping right, they the pistol stopped balls yep. at all angles, even 90 degrees. That was a surprise, right. you know? Yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. I think I think all of us would have thought at 90 degrees. Yeah, um, I thought, at least, uh, I thought through, at least the pistol would get through And quite likely that. the pistol balls going yeah. through as well, but it didn't. All of the targes stopped the pistol balls at, mm. at 90, at 45 and mm. at 20 degrees. But the significant difference is when it was received on a stud. Right. The studs had the effect of stopping it completely to the point we've got the ball literally bouncing off the yep. targe or deflecting it enough that it's going just very shallow uh, into mm -hmm. the wood and no further, no yep. further than the first plank. So I guess in my mind, if you had to carry one of these targes, what one would you carry? Soft wood with the wool, please. Yeah. That'll do, mate. Yeah, I think that works. Defin definitely, yeah. For you guys, what's the main takeaway points, main things you're surprised about? Use soft wood and cover your targe in studs. <laughs> <laughs> and pitch at an angle if you can. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. And for, for someone who is actually firing yeah. at this weapon, try and get above it, to the side of it, below it, at the man. But don't, don't. put your shot on target on one of these. Um, my big surprise, a pistol stopper. Mm -hmm. Wasn't expecting mm -hmm. it, especially at the... The, the vertical angle. My man's got a targe trying to aim at somewhere 
out with that Tarjavia. Absolutely. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks for setting us up. Oh, no been, worries. Been, Thank you both for. I always say every day is a school day, but this has been a great day. It's at school. been a fun day. <laughs> yes. As if only school was like this. Can school day be like this, please? <laughs> Great. Well, yeah. Thank you both. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Raymond. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and thank you, Mister uh, Mister Manny, who took a, took all the brunt. He really worked the hardest. Though. He did work the hardest. <laughs> Suffered through his art. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, in order to fund more myth-busting videos like this, I'm going to be selling tickets for a prize draw for the chance for someone to win this gorgeous targe made by Vaughan Moffat from Hammer in Hand. It's got this beautiful cowhide backing. Lots of decorative stud work in the front. It comes with a carrying strap that has a skiing acklish knife attached to it. It can be worn in the sheath attached to the strap or it can also be worn in a sheath that's attached to the back of the shield. Cool stuff. And this targe still has five pistol balls still embedded in it. So it'll be a great wall hanger, talking piece or anyone who's into, you know, Jacobite reenacting. So if you want to enter for a chance to win this awesome targe, then head to my website tomlanghorn.com forward slash shop and there you'll find all the relevant information on how to buy a ticket. I'll be running the prize draw until 12pm on the 30th of June 2023. After that, I will announce the winner on all my social media outlets. So I hope you enjoyed this folks. Huge thanks to Paul, Raymond, Graham and Vaughan and everyone else who made this video possible. Big thanks to my Patreons. Also huge thanks to Wandrium for sponsoring this video. Please do try out that free trial folks. It's a cool platform. Good luck on the prize draw and I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Catch you later.